I get what you're saying about distorted because the game got distorted essentially. Mm. It's like, you know, a whole new sound came in. Like mm. the South took over and that, that was mm. the kind of sound and a lot, especially in America, you know what I mean? Like a lot of New York MCs, that whole New York sound changed. Yeah. Everyone would do some like straight up trap music or bounce music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what was selling, that's what was getting views, that's what was getting it in. And it's like certain artists over there came in and kind of, I know loads of people stuck to the whole boom bap thing and kept on that mm. rail, but certain artists came in in America and kind of revived that, re-sparked yeah. that. So you had your Griseldas, you had your Rock Marcy's and, mm. and, and Eto and mm. all these men, you know what I mean? Coming in and, and straight up just doing some shit that mm. you or I would have listened to on a tape in 98 or a Mob Deep beat or yeah, a yeah, Wu-Tang yeah, yeah. beat. Killer, killer, oh, 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 podcast. Killer, killer, official .com. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com Beatbox created. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Hang on here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct central London or as central as what? Central as you need to be, you don't want to be anywhere else, all right? <coughs> um, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, hold tight, strainstation.co.uk, and big up. Big up nopolinrecords.com for all your hits, the future and more. Nostalgia, most definitely in the house today. Yo, if you got the television app, you know what it is. The sporting art, street culture, mixes, streaming, the lot. You go and get it free. Download iPhone, Android, the app and more. Television. Yo, inside the house today is a very, very special one for me. And I hope it's a special one for you guys as well. Uh, it's 360 Physicals. For those of you that don't know, is my crew, my peoples. From 1997 onwards, part of a bigger fraternity of the UK hip-hop scene that was building at its time for the likes of the Roots Maneuvers, the Shorty Blitz, the MKs and the more they were all orbiting around Soho, Deal Real Records, Mr Bongos, Uptown, Wild Pitch, you name it, this was the place to be back in the day but this is it. Us as a crew 360 Physicals, we used to do our thing and now after 25 years we're finally pulling together We've got ourselves a wee album known as the Style Crown. We're here to talk about all the legacies, all the old school, all the history for you guys. It may or may not have been there of its time. We have Cans, we have Coasty with Johnny Verga, myself, Killer Kells. We're going to talk 360 physicals from back in the day. How are we doing, gentlemen? Yeah, all good, all good man. All, all good. All good. All good. That shit, that shit was an intro and a half, right? I mean, this is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, 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 you put it down. Grand entrance. <laughs> grand entrance. Grand imperial. Hell yeah. It's an MC project, isn't it, essentially? Yeah, four MCs, all putting it down, all led, uh, really showing what, what it's about from those days up to now. And back in the day, it really was. When I think about those times, it was all sepia and beautiful and all very much about just getting up, jumping up and doing everything humanly possible to get ourselves noticed, wasn't it? Yeah, think about it. Like, you can put down the towns on, you know, little towns that we just rolled up to, brought a vibe. And just killed it. I mean, that was the essence of 360 physicals in the old school, wasn't it, man? Just turn up, bring the vibe, smash the jam. Yeah, very much so, very much so. And also, hip hop in its essence wasn't just one one thing as well. I mean, Kans, I know you frequented in the in the graph scene as much as you did in busting bars and whatnot, wasn't it? There was a lot of things going on in London for its time. Yeah, man. Busy times, bruv. What we're talking? What 97, 98? Was it you guys came together? From what I know, yeah, yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 95, 96, like platoon crew, frontline, 360 physicals. It was a progression yeah. of like heads linking together, connected around hip hop. So that's the mad thing is because it's kind of like parallels that, you know what I mean? I'm listening to hip hop them times, obviously MC to drum and bass, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you guys were actually in music and doing that. I'm on another side of it, like doing graffiti, wherever else it might be. But it's kind of mad that, you know what I mean? The culture brings us together in in ways that we're going to unfold during this podcast, Come on, baby. Ball, motherfucker. Yeah, but you know what it is as well? Like, I don't think hip-hop was particularly, like, cutting edge for its time. <clears throat> there was a lot of things going on, like garage and drum and bass and everything. You know, record stores back then in Soho were really the identifiable places where you would meet up with people and hang out. But there was loads of different genres. There was loads of different stores. And if it, it feels crazy to think that some of the more upfront, you know, task force. Um, as I mentioned before, Roots Maneuver, definitely. Skinny Man, um, big up all the Mud family. You know, the, these were these were 
still young and impressionable people that were just interacting and getting together in these in these places, right? Mm. No, definitely. <coughs> I mean, there's some mad characters we met through that scene, man. If you think of people like Maestro coming up, spitting their Maestro and Jargon when they were doing their thing. Yeah. Obviously, Task Force and the whole Mudberry crew, all those guys. But just being around that and ciphering weekly, I mean, just going to rep shows, open mics, all those kinds of things. It was a great training ground as MCs. Yeah. I think that's the other thing. It's like that, like what you just mentioned, the other side of that, like where I'm from, everyone was into drum and bass, garage, whatever it is, jungle back in the day. And even like where you guys are talking about going to Soho and different record shops, mm. like one street, you got this, that, you know what I mean? So I'd go to like Black Market Records back then and like mm. be almost fucking starstruck seeing Nicky Black Market. Like that's the guy off the tape packs, you know what I mean? It was mm. like, so jungle was our, our whole thing. It's like almost for me, you know what I mean? It was Graf that bridged me into hip hop. Like, mm. I listened to, like, Snoop and Easy e and that as a kid. Mm. But you know what I mean? It's like that whole kind of era. It's a, it's a mad time, a defining time, those little years, pre-millennium. Yeah, I mean? very much so. Very much so. Coasty, I mean, you and me, actually, we, we go back a lot earlier than 360 physicals, don't we? I mean, yeah, a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, we used to hang out a lot at, in Brighton. Um, used to come to my house, as, you know, as kids, we used to just, like, practice and, you know, persevere on bitten exactly. bars, right? Yeah. Yeah, we used to, used we used to kind of practice those freestyles together, man. Mm. It was yeah, it predated a little bit, I think. Mm. I think a lot of people are gonna not be expecting me to be spitting bars on this. Song. No, I've already been asked about that a few times. Whether it's the first time that that that, that you've been spitting bars, I've been like, there were occasions beforehand. <coughs> it was uh, yeah. We did, we did that track with K Delight back in the day. Yeah, big up K Delight, absolutely. And there was the Prime and Keller tapes. Yeah. Way back. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. And, and our stint with Marco Magic. Where is Marco Magic? If you know Marco Magic is... Uh, where in the world is Marco Magic? Where in the world is that Marco Magic? And just to put it into context for its time, like 360 physicals were at least 12 to 13 people deep. For its time, and if you were ever orbiting around Soho on a weekend, it'd be hard to avoid us. We literally would just be... All up in the place. All right, yeah, the activities. List the activities, though, isn't it? We reach up there, Nolan Poland, hit the spot, hit Mr. Bongo, go digging, ciphers in the street, go check graffiti. There were writers, there were DJs. It was like an original hip-hop crew. And out of it has come some musicians who've gone on to great things, some artists who've done different things. And, you know, this album is trying to encap encapsulate that, trying to take that spirit on, you know, like 360 physicals. Like, a lot of people probably won't even know where the where the name came from. To be honest, I was in it for time and I had to ask Keller. <laughs> well, uh, so there's a book that's just about, for you, those of you uh, uh, watching, uh, listening and watching, I'm going to point up to the top of the board here. Um, there's a uh, phase two book called uh, Style Writing from the Underground, which is a seminal book from, from that 80s icon that is phase two. Um, and in there, there's a bunch of, a page of ebonics of what certain things mean. And uh, yeah, there's physicals, which stands for friends in a circle a close circle of friends so I was like well then it's 360 360 physicals and that's that's kind of how that name came about I don't think it was a name before was it like, I can't remember no man the only other 360 physicals I've seen is 360 physicals like physical therapy <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the Google right yeah yeah, yeah. or like you know that's the one Kansas that's about misses, isn't it? you know what I mean get ready for the 360 physicals <laughs> that's what will happen next we'll go up some massage piles and shit <laughs> yeah man get the money coming in yeah exactly I don't think it was that kind of physical therapy no, alright <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, cool. But that being said, though, Soho was very much about that back then. It was a seedier place than it is now, wasn't it? Yeah, man. Models every every place. And it's like, OK. Do you know what? I don't really... Like, I lived with some sex workers later, so I've kind of got my stuff, my eyes opened. But, like, I didn't know anything like that when I was in 360 Fizzle coming down. I was like... Mm -hmm. Well, there are models all over the place, man. Like, who's modelling up there? <laughs> like, I did have no idea. It was a fashion shoot up there. I had no idea what yeah. was going on. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. Let's mm. just get on. I was so obsessed with just getting there, meeting mm. you guys. Like, you know, we didn't even write that many tracks. It was more just like, okay, go to a jam. Let's all get on. Let's all freestyle. Let's vibe. We didn't Let's write battle. any tracks, did we? We wrote three tracks, man. you just forgotten. So well, where would you guys... Show me them. I've forgotten them too. <laughs> <laughs> where would you guys do this stuff? Would you just cipher like out and about or, you know what I mean, go to somebody's house or a studio? Or All just... of the above, man. On the yeah. street, on the tubes. Just make it happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, like in the, in a wall of fame, like we're checking out the graffiti, heads yeah. would be there. And then the, the Mecca was always wherever 
Easy Free, DJ Graphics was, wherever right. his house was. Like, we'd always congregate, whether it's going through Bermondsey, checking all the Millwall fans on the way, or going to Golders Green, picking up some stuff from the bakery. We'd just be like, go to... Golders Green, did you do that? Yeah, he went to Golders Green, man. Don't remember, you don't remember the cyphers? Oh, I went to Golders Green. Uh, again, the parallels, bruv. The only times I've been Golders Green is like doing the yard there and like yeah, yeah. bush bombing and bushwhacking up there. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm. got some mad stories on them, but we won't go into that in this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> bush, yeah. I'll tell you, Bermondsey and Bermondsey and Golders Green, I mean, these were formidable places. They, back then, they weren't the kind of places you just couldn't readily visit for, unless you're going there specifically for a Especially reason. Especially Bermondsey back then, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Bermo's a different story, mate. Mm. Yeah, man. So what, how does that feel for you lot? Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's a mad cycle. It's like, you know, for you lot are doing this as a crew and now you're here like with an mm. album. You know what I mean? It's like... How yeah. How does it feel for you, brother? Yeah, how does like, it feel no, for no, you, Cans? You know well, I mean? it, it, here's the thing, because I've came into kind of an established crew. Right? Yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. Were, were together. Yeah, we've we've ran parallels. We're all from the same culture, the same kind of school. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, um, yeah, it's mad when you lot know each and then and it, what's even crazier is it, yeah, tell these people like how many how many members did you guys have back in the day? Well, like it was at thirteen or fourteen at least on any given weekend. We never made an official count, did we? No. no, there was a couple of photos where we even excelled our own <laughs> expectations on how yeah, numbers, yeah. right? So now so yeah, three OG MCs, you three. And Kong, who's the producer. Yep, who's inside the house. Big shout out to Kong, No yeah, Pulling Records. Kong the Artisan, so he's made all of the music on the album, produced yeah. every track. But he's yeah. also like DMC champion himself as a DJ. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah, yeah. 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 Say that again. Yeah. You take second. Cats. What was it again? Second. UK team DMC's 2002 <gasps> with the Flirty Cats. There it is. Because yeah. he's in Hong Kong at the moment, which is why he ain't here. That's why he ain't here to uh, to uh, have a chat with us. But uh, he's here in spirit. Yeah, Gareth Easy Free as well. You know yep. what I mean? That's another member. Like... Yep, that's right. Beat maker in his own right, plus DJ and and uh, archivist of uh, of graffiti um, with a magazine called Heavy Gyroscope. Phenom phenomenal <laughs> camera operator as well, man. Yeah, man. You know, like the not buying it video that you lot might have seen. The do you know who you're fucking with video? That's all easy free on the cameras there. Mm. So there's a lot of ad adaptability within the crew. You know what I mean? Well, but yeah, we're yeah. also we're also from different at its time. We were from the outside looking in, like like yourself. You're from South. Coasty was from South Coast. Um, John uh, and Lexky and all the other guys, big up our people's realms of rhyme. You know, Basingstoke and Red in Berkshire way. And then me, I was Sussex, you know, I was, I was mm. like Gatwick area. So we weren't actually Ooh. in Crawley Crew old type. Crawley. But Creepy we, Crawley. <clears throat> but we weren't in the mix like that. So we had to come <laughs> in. So the moment we came in, it was almost like we were a little bit more hungrier than perhaps some of the other people because we... we we were coming in yeah, without and had anything. had to go back out after that. Yeah. So you get your drop of it and go. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like where I live, for example, you could just tune in on your on your radio FM yeah. and you get Cool FM, Don FM, Upfront. You get all these stations like easy. Yeah, you sit yeah. there with your little tape pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Phone in the little mobile number, boom, hear your name come back over the radio, shout your mate down the road. Your mate yeah. down the road shouts you back out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. like a, like, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. It's just mad because I'm leaning into the culture in one direction there. You lot are like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And and then, and then the way that builds, it's builds. It's like laying these bricks. Yeah, you know what I mean, that's that's you know, in the end, made you who you are as Killer Keller. Yeah, you guys as artists. You know what I mean? And it's like that little foundation of being interested in something. It's kind of like yeah. Go in that extra mile, you know what I mean? Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's more that it's it, and it's more telling for people to come out from outside of London. That attitude of um, and ambition is a, a very different one. It's not that I'm I'm not suggesting that <coughs> anyone in London is by any means complacent. It's just it's there on the doorstep. It's this in London, guys. Yo, <laughs> um, <laughs> <No, I'm> <laughs> while we're on the subject, like Johnny, like I think it'd be a good opportunity for you to ex explain your story. Like where where did you begin? Because you know, Reading is a scene back then. I remember like Alley Cat and all those different venues. But you know, you, you've got a history, and you know you're really well known in the in the Berkshire area with with some of the. You know, you projects know you've done. Sometimes it makes you wonder when people know you because, like, actually you think, well, what have I put out that's, that's touched you in that way? But, like, um, back in the day, um, I grew up in a house with my big bro who was a, um, a hip-hop head in the original, the 80s. I'm talking, like, they used to go to the shows, see all the Def Jam artists when they came over. And, like, he used to rhyme. And I was, like, good with words, so I just started rhyming from an age. But, like... I didn't really get into it until I met Lexky, who was a 360 member. Um, Lexky, I was playing basketball a lot of the time. Lexky was down at the court 
and uh, there's little stories about that. And he was, you know, someone who was just always paro. And I'm like, why are you so paranoid? And I think in some aspects, he was connecting to the music, to the stuff he's going through in his life. So, um, you know, after I disarmed him, I was like, okay, let's uh, let's get on with it. Let's let's make some music. Lex introduced me to freestyling, and I started freestyling a lot. That ended up me linking with you guys, doing stuff, freestyling everywhere, doing that probably to everyone's uh, uh, sickness. And then after that, like it was just like okay, did a little tour of you that time, did some other stuff in different countries and whatever, and it's been. Just making music since, man. Mm. I make music. That's what I do. Like You brought up an interesting point there that I yeah, feel we should that? let the people know. What's that? It's like how you guys linked together. Because okay. back then there's no mobiles, there's yeah. no social media. Mm. You know what I mean? It's true, man. It's true. There was literally nothing, was there? Yeah, it's like how did that happen? Let, let, let these guys know. I wasn't really... I'm a passenger in that, man. Like, um, in terms of how I linked, I linked like Lex would go, oh, there's these people you should link up with. I was like, all right, fine. I'll give it a go. And they seem cool. So, yeah, yeah I'll run. But generally, it'd be like an 11 o'clock call uh, at Deal Oil Records. Because mm -hmm. the moment we all met there, mm -hmm. it was on. And from there, it was just like, if we lost anybody en route, then we lost them. But nine times out of ten, we just all kind of stuck together as a huddle. You get the yeah. major message on a Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Deal Real. Yeah, 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 yeah. 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yo, Even then, for like, real. rewind the tape, like... You know what I mean? What I'm getting at is like, what, what was it? Hip Hop Connection magazine? Oh yeah, for real. Where you guys, you know what I mean? There's no socials, there's no mobiles, you can't text somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these guys, you know what I mean? Tell them how I you think guys I think the majority initially... of us, yeah, I think the majority of us um, had Hip Hop Connection as a bit of a monthly Bible that, that gave us an insight into who's doing what and where it might be. And there was a connections section in the back of the, in the, back of the magazine saying, you know, it's like a classifies for people that wanted to start up cruise and shit and i remember on at least more than two or three occasions i'd reach out to people and they would end up being part of 360 physical it was like the slowest facebook page ever yeah like, basically <laughs> it, took, it took about two weeks to get a reply yeah, yeah. that's straight up snail mail wasn't it you yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. post an ad someone going on the post office put a stamp right yeah, yeah, yeah. a letter put some kind of tags in it yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah. Is that how we connected? Is that how you and me yeah, connected? Yeah, yeah. Was it? We definitely connected through there. Fucking hell, dude. That's like old school. Like, you remember like pen pals? I can like, still remember your postal or... address, mate. I can still remember the postal address. If I ever want to send your mum a Christmas card, <laughs> I can probably still remember it. <laughs> Big old mumsy, yeah. Oh, fuck Big old mama Keller. Didn't know that. Yeah, but that, that's Maybe the sort of thing. Maybe not postcode. R8 or something. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but it's, it's what... Put it out there, it's man. what... Oh, it's what... <laughs> <laughs> Just get but, stitches, yo. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it was so common to to deal with those things on a um, on a real time level of well, you're not gonna you know you're not gonna get a DM like that. Mm. And it also goes as far as to say as well, it's also within the craft. Um, in on social media, it's almost a given that you get this information that allows you to just be a graph writer and exercise the exposure yourself of being a graph writer, even though you may not be particularly good or great. It's the same with breakdancing and shit like mm -hmm. that. Like back then, you actually had to be really good. You had good. to be out there. <laughs> you also had to be there. You had to be out and yeah. about in order to meet other people, whatever, especially with graffiti, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's how you came across people, essentially, mm -hmm. was being on the line. But the same with you lot, you know what I mean? You go right. into them events. What is it you say in the hook at the beginning of uh, Style Crown? Fresh night, yeah. That's what he's Stratford talking about. Rex, Stratford Rich, Fresh 98. 98. Yo, do you remember Fresh 98? I mean, for those of you that were there in the UK scene, Fresh 98 was a huge one. Do you remember? We were just freestyling and battling each other outside before we even got in the venue of Stratford Rex. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I remember Coles getting into a few battles there, man. And I remember linking up with, like, Rugged Ezra from Vinyl Dialects. Mm. He, he smacked it. I don't know if he's battling Chester outside then. Chester P. Because, like, they had... A real link afterwards, like there was a real meeting of minds of them guys afterwards. Big yeah. up both of them, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember, you know, Jest was there. I remember, like, there was a lot of Scottish guys that were there. There was so many different people that were just all, you know, tr descending on on East London, Stratford, mm -hmm. and and then one getting in there. I barely remember much in the venue. It was more about what was. Do you know what I mean? It was so. Yeah. I've got very very few memories of what actually happened in Fresh Night. I remember the incredible Scratch Pickles were there. Mm. I remember some crazy Danish breakdancing crew. Mm. But apart from that, all my memories are in the queue outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of it's the social side, do you know what I mean? Yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. big time. Um, you and me, Cans, we met in a... In a a little bit late, and this is how... Yeah, way, way further on. But yeah, no, this what's interesting again. It's like the same kind of venue, like Stratford Rex. I'm going there to Jungle Raves mm. and whatnot, whatnot. Yeah. So back then, yeah, I'd, I'd listen to like US hip-hop. 
But, you know, as ignorant as it sounds, like, I didn't know a lot about UK hip-hop, like, at all back mm. then, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, it's interesting where it kind of, when you do enter that world and you see these guys and what they're, because I think I heard, I remember back in the day, like, the first thing that caught my ear or our ears was when Task Force did a thing, I think it was Simon Says remix. Yeah. Oh, my Graf God, the Graf bus the bus up. up. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. And we, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, hold on, these these guys are like, rod. And I was like, these these men have got to be writers. Certain men have got to be on yeah, some yeah, shit yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's mad like that, ain't it? How the culture just crosses over, bruv. It will pull you in either one way or another. Big and, time. And you're all in the same pool, essentially. Is that how? So how did you get into the rap side of things? Because, you, like you said, you were into... You went into more like the street stuff, the graph stuff, the, the drum yeah. and bass. So how graph, did you get into that? I mean, my, my thing essentially like was Jungle MC and that's the first thing that like, I'd, I'd, I'd done rapping and shit since I was a kid. But I remember like hearing a fucking Skibber lyric about the cars. Uh, fucking yeah. Cavalier Oca Libra. Mm, you know what trader. I mean? Yeah, enter oh, auto trader. Exactly. <laughs> Skibber the supplier. But bruv, I wrote that thing out, yeah, my mate. Mm -hmm. We was just like, go to a party and then just MC that. And people be like, cheering it as if it's ours, even though they knew, Cool yeah, FM, yeah, yeah. and they knew it, whose yeah, lyric yeah. it was. Do you know what I mean? And that, that gave me a little feel for it. I started writing lyrics to that sort of stuff. It's like a whatnot. salute that you, uh, that you knew it more so than it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like someone's there to perform it live for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a fucking uh, tribute act, yeah, or whatever yeah, they yeah, call yeah. them. But um, yeah, and then it, it, it evolved. Like I was listening to a lot of US hip hop, like I say. And I remember, like, yeah, the first 16 I wrote, bruv, I was listening to Westwood and uh, Jadakiss was on there with his solo album, like, first first thing off that, with that uh, Put Your Hands Up song. Mm. It's the J-A-D-A. -A. I got beef with the feds in the D-A. Bro, when I heard that shit, mm. and I was like, bro, it blew my mind. I've been listening to hip-hop years for them. I was just like, again, learned that, learned that verse. And I was mm. like, you know what, like, I'm writing my own shit. I just took his flow, just started writing my own words. Bang, and bang. That was my first thing, and then... Yeah, me being me, bruv, like, wanting to take things to a level. So then it was like, yeah, let me get into a studio. Let me go record. Let me mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. Dropped, like, a little mixtape. I remember walking around with my boy Dame. Big up, Dame. We'd walk around. Tight, Dame. I got all these CDs printed up and, and burnt up and, like, walking around Brixton and that, fucking just handing out CDs. Sick. I remember, like, he probably wouldn't have remember it, but we ran into, like, Shorty Blitz. I think it was Big Ted back then, bruv. Mm -hmm. And we're, like, giving them these CDs and, like... I remember even off the back of that, I just, it was all free. You know what I mean? A lot of people these days, yeah, sell CDs, yeah. whatever, whatever. But I knew, nobody knows me, so I need to just put, push this into people's faces. Mm. I had a, like a little mobile number on the back, like whatever. Oh, school, Thinking school. Thinking like feedback or bookings or whatever the fuck, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And people were texting on the line going, yo, your shit is sick. And people like quoting the bars in the text messages. They didn't have to do that shit. That's sick. But yeah. it gave me a confidence as an MC, bruv, because mm. I was like, I've done this with Jungle. I've like stood up there. I remember going to like a uh, temple. I think it was uh, Dreamscape Rave, bruv. And a load of man then was there, like a lot of Norwood man and DFL heads. And um, I don't know what had happened that night, but some MC weren't there or some shit. Brocky's on the decks, the mic was open. Boom, everyone starts touching this mic, bro. What? Boom, boom, boom. Like, obviously, man, they've been emceeing for years mm -hmm. at parties. So everyone's got bars and, and dropping them off. Avon's there, all of them, man, them. Anyway, thought nothing of it. And a couple of weeks later, this geezer's texting me. He's like, yo, you lot are on Brocky's tape. Rah, 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 no rah, way, rah. you got on the tape? Brother, and he's like, oh, you got Ooh, shout outs sick. left, right, and said, no, no, no. I was like, no way. And brother, it was in the published tape pack. Remember oh, them tape packs yeah, yeah, on yeah, the cover? Like, you know what I mean? Again, it gives you that confidence, bruv. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's how I kind of got into rap and emceeing and, and, and enjoying that side of it. That's fucking incredible. Like, we'll talk about parallel to us. And and then that's how we, we bucked because... Of, of all the kind of South activity that, you know, yeah. big up on FDC. Yeah, like no, shout to Gusto, bruv. At the mm. end of the day, like that guy. Yeah, big up Gusto. He puts people together, connecting people. I should call him one-to-one -one like Eric's son. Gusto, <laughs> you know how it's done. <laughs> Here you are. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you know what I mean? So it's like, I used to graph with Gusto, roll mm. about with them lot, and that's how I came down like Sussex sides. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how. And it. then, you know what I mean? You, you, like they say, all city. You'd mm. be everywhere. You'd be more than all city. Because mm. you'd be in fucking Brighton. You'd be mm. in fucking... In Birmingham, you'd be everywhere. You'd be moving, yeah, yeah. You'd be smashing your city, but you'd be branching out. Kent, all of them fucking ends. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's how in the end, I think Gusto knew you, obviously. 2001, that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, think, and I think we didn't see you for years, and then Gusto had a big party 2008 or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
and then butt up with you and it was like raw da 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 and then George was about Porge One shout out to Porge One, one and Doughboy Doughboy DJ yeah, Doe that's right you know what I mean and then them times you know what I mean that mm-hmm. brought that together and it was kind of like that's when you were doing real things then on mm-hmm. like music levels and industry and you had the, yeah. the whole beatbox accolades mm-hmm. and everything else like, yeah that came that came with the uh, that came with the natural trajectory of like if it wasn't for 360 physicals, I wouldn't be doing that. I wouldn't yeah. have happened. And that's my point, you know what I mean? That you lot have all started these foundations as people that just had passions for the music, mm. for like the culture, whatever whatever angle it was, you know what I mean? And mm. then, you know, who, who would have thought like, and then you're on a fucking stage with Snoop, with fucking Snoop at the award mm. shows and yeah. fucking with Pharrell and fucking Prince. Mm. Prince, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're in a good stead with Killer Kelly. You on, tuned in, y'all tuned in to the right show today. Yeah, Let me just okay. tell you that. Do you think, guys, do you think that the Style Crown album, just, you know, as a body of work, do, do you think it takes people back to an era of, uh, of musical nostalgia? Or do you think it's a use of skill sets that perhaps have been slightly... Uh, 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 di- what's the word? Distorted. <coughs> the, the the levels in which we're coming in from are of a of are of a time where that shit, the standards, the skill set really did matter. Do you think we put that? Do you think that's conveyed in that album of a time? I think we're just trying to put out an album that works in the now. Like, it's got those beats and it's got that feeling. But, you know, there's plenty of kids who are coming out with that. Like, when you look at Tremendous or you look at Lord Apex or you look at Kofi Stone or Coops, they're doing the same thing, man. And it's, it's, it's respect to that. The album is, like, it's got that feeling that if you were there in 95 or you were there in 92, you'll feel those beats because Kong knows that because he's you know, grown in that he's seasoned. You can see the rings in his fingers. Do you know what I mean? He's like an oak tree or something. And it's like, um, that's what we're doing. We just build it. We just built an album based on skills, like you say. And I don't think it's been, I think it's been distorted by some in the culture, but like, you know, there's plenty of people who are just real. And, and there are people who are real who've managed to make success out of this as well. Mm. So like, well, those are the people that, sorry, man. No, go on. Those are the people that um we would consider as, peers or what we're shooting for here do you know what i mean like the of course like i when i hear your influences or i know coast's influences coast is a top lyricist do you know what i mean he's, he's a, a sniper in the game the sniper in the game one of the people that i look up to kans has brought something to the table that i was like okay that we re- didn't realize we needed and it's actually added to it like a fuck like the flavor for it has it's been amazing so it's kind of like okay what we doing here? And me, like, I'll do whatever I feel like on a track. That's fine. Your versatility's crazy from singing right way through to just your poet, the poetic level of what you do, you know? Cool. Thanks, man. But it's just like, we do... Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, we do whatever we got to do, but it's just more like, yeah, the album is that. It's like, it's not just nostalgia, man. Like, nostalgia is, is great. But like, if I want nostalgia, I'll still go for... I'll still go for, you Chapel know, Quest or something like that. Ill grammar. I was thinking King Joss. Mm-hmm. That's what I like. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's like it'll be a little thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or Loop Troops first album or something. You know what I mean? It'll be like something that's just personal like that. So I don't, you know, that nostalgia thing is there. But we got something that I think speaks to the now. Yeah. I call it. I call it a modern day renaissance, bro. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, mm. it's the classic. Yeah, yeah. It's the classic, but you're bringing it in a modern kind of. You know what I mean? Like it, essentially, mm. no. Anything we're doing is new. It's twenty twenty two. We're writing new songs. We're we're using beats. They might be of a certain elk or sound, mm. but it's like yeah, I get what you're saying about distorted because the game got distorted. Essentially, mm. it's like you know a whole new sound came in. Like mm. the South took over, and that that was mm. the kind of sound. And a lot, especially in America, you know what I mean? Like a lot of New York MCs, that whole New York sound changed. Yeah. Everyone would do some like straight up trap music or bounce music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what was selling. That's what was getting views. That's what was getting it in. And it's like certain artists over there came in and kind of... I know loads of people stuck to the whole boom bap thing and kept on that mm. rail. But certain artists came in in America and kind of revived that, re-sparked yeah. that. So you had your Griseldas, you had your Rock Marcy's and, mm. and, and Eto and mm. all these, man. You know what I mean? Coming in and... And straight up just doing some shit that mm. you or I would have listened to on a tape in 98 or a Mob Deep beat or a yeah, yeah, Wu-Tang yeah, yeah. beat. 
And um, for us coming up and growing up in that school, it feels good to kind of breathe on those beats again. Yeah. To, on that yeah. sound and, and then bring that back as well. Obviously, loads of UK people been holding that sound down from day dot. Mm. But you know what I mean? It's like kind of like... Yeah, when you've never veered away from it and you, and you come with an album in 2022, mm. it's got its place to fit right into that. Um, uh, Coasty, I just want you to add value to that because uh, going back to the originators of the sound and we we cannot go without saying that you you had the opportunity to work with Mark B. Um, you you had, you were definitely forging, your rest in peace, and you were definitely forging a sound at the time of when that first generation of boom bap hit, was part of the UK sound, um, and like as as Cans mentions, you know nowadays it's almost like um, it's it's almost having a, a second wind with the Griselda's, with the um, the Hoolies, with the Sunny Jim's. Big up all them, man. So they got Sunny. Yeah, I'd like to get your your perspective on that, particularly as you you were working with some of the pioneers of its time. Yeah, <clears throat> I was never a UK hip hop only people. There were certain purists back in the days, but. But when we were in the record shops, we were buying the US stuff. We were buying the, 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 the a, a bit of both. We weren't, we weren't restricting ourselves to either. We weren't straight up US. We weren't straight up UK, which gave us a good kind of grounding on everything on the scene. Um, but, but yeah, me and Mark never had any, any tracks out. We 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 talked about it. Mm. We 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 had a few experiments, but nothing that ever came of fruition. But. Yeah, I mean, the, the new album we've got, I think people can be very accepting that it is something that's very true to us. It's got a little bit of something that will spark a bit of reminiscing in, in, in the people that have been along as, around as much as we have. Yeah. Um, and it's got something for the people that are 20 years younger in the game than we are. Mm. So. I can't even remember what your question was. No, <laughs> no you've hit them. You've hit no, them. You've hit the nail on the head. head yeah, 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 exactly. you know, that, it's that, kind that, of there. That, that, exactly. So the only thing to conclude is like you got to go and check out the album. Star Crown is the one. October. Say that again, say, say that again. Star Crown, 13th of October, Nolan Poland Records. Go get the vinyl. We got what, four colors? Yeah. We got four colors. We got like custom vinyl, all kinds of stuff. Go check Nolan tapes Poland too. Records. Cassette tapes. tapes. Cassette tapes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's wow. One time I only. Some test presses if we. Test pressings, <laughs> man. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, you're gonna have to. Enough. Gonna Quite have to test them first. Hang on. Sold out before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, it's 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 a it's an opening into a world that, you know, that took 25 years for us to come together and pull something like this um, uh, in, in, into play. So it's it's a uh, seminal for me personally, um, especially of an era when I was rapping and not beatboxing. This has been a lot of fun, and it's good to reconnect with you guys, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. You I know. think that's what it is. If, when you've got a passion for this stuff and you love the music mm. and you love those beats and you listen to bars and you're into that stuff, then you know what I mean? Why the hell not drive that all the way home? If you've mm. got that fire burning inside you in your belly, then then it's got to be done. This was a natural progression, bruv. Mm. That's right. You know what I mean? The soundtrack to that story. Like the story of like, okay. You guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The soundtrack of that. And then what it is now. Like coming through with skills as, you know, we're all big men coming through and spitting something that's hard and something that's real and something that's effective. And if you're feeling that, then go check it. That's the yeah, ticket, 100%. baby. That's the ticket. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast out like him was out of fashion. He's my fucking people. 360 physicals. Go check us out, you heard? Huh? Um, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Do not sleep on this. Repeat. Uh, repeat. Do not sleep on this. Repeat. Uh, yo, take care of yourselves. Nice one, gentlemen. Nice one, peace. Peace.